Welcome back, chat, to round four of Chicago Clash. This is our split round where half of our players will be playing, half of our players will be taking lunch, and that half of our players includes Etchi, who's out for lunch. So I'm here, joined by Gabe. Welcome, Gabe, to the cast. Thank you, thank you. Happy to be here. Gabe has been judging for us, thankfully, but we're going to have his expertise on this next upcoming match that is ready to go. So let's go ahead and start. Yeah, let's not waste any time. So it's between... Ryan and Michael, we haven't seen on stream yet. Michael playing Lost Tina versus Ryan's Turbo Hands. Have you played this matchup yourself at all? Yeah, so uh, I've played it a lot in previous formats, but it definitely does change going into the new format. Right. Obviously, the biggest thing is Path to the Peak. Not going to be an available option for Michael, which is going to allow Ryan to have a lot more aggression and be able mm -hmm. to establish himself a lot more as the game goes on. It's also going to hurt some of the late game potential Michael can go for, but this is a match that we've seen playing out a lot in the field today, and it's gone both ways. How, and, I mean, there's been a lot of matches that the audience haven't gotten to see, to see because there have been a lot of matches that have been off stream, right? So what? how would you rank these decks so far based off the tournament today? Do you, do you think they're both tier 1? Do you think one is tier 1 and one is tier 2? How do you feel about this Turbo Hands and this, and this Latina in the meta as it stands? Yeah, it's really interesting. Both are kind of somewhat polarizing decks as far as matchup mm -hmm. spread goes. That's you true. have the Iron Hands deck that can struggle a lot into Charizard, the biggest deck in the format, but really preys on a lot of those smaller decks. So it's kind of one of those matchup roulette decks, if you okay. so to speak, gotcha. where you can go in and you really want to hit those certain matchups. Whereas Garatina, arguably the best deck of the previous format, mm -hmm. but now going into this format, you lose some crucial pieces and a lot of your bad matchups get better. I would say Turbo Hands and Tina are both around that tier one category. I think Turbo Hands is slightly more cemented in tier one, and okay. Garatina is maybe on the fringe. Gotcha. We see Ryan using that town store, looking for a tool here, but this deck doesn't play anything super powerful like that Forest Seal Stone, so just grabbing that future booster energy capsule. Mew EX in the active means that this Maridon in the hand for Ryan is almost ready to attack with that peak acceleration attack, but I'm not sure if Ryan has any energy to use that attack, and I don't know if there's any Iron Hands either to start charging up so this might be a bit of a slower game from Ryan's side, which is not what you want to see from Turbo Hands. And that's what Turbo Hands preys on as well. It preys on that early game aggression. If your opponent can't set up, then that's your key to victory. Mm -hmm. We see Ryan looks like has four <laughs> basic Pokemon you're worried about. Okay. <laughs> but do we have the energy, though? I, I don't know. Booster Energy Capsule trying to get that knockout onto this Comfey. We do have Iron Crown EX on the bench already with that Cobalt Command ability, if you want to tell the audience about what that does. Yeah, absolutely. Cobalt Command, uh, all of your future Pokemon EX, except or all of your future Pokemon except any Iron Crown EX, do 20 more damage to your opponent's active. So that's going to be really crucial. It's going to put that Maridon uh, and allow its effect, Peak Acceleration, to get all the way up to that 80 damage. That is so crucial to knock out these Comfies. But I don't see energy in the hand so i think it's restart for two supporter already being played but there's no energy still this deck plays so many energies partially because electric generator right is is in the deck so you want to play a bunch of lightning energies to make electric generators more powerful but yet ryan not having any yeah it's a bit of a casino game too even if he hits it it's going <laughs> right. to really come down to how many are you getting you always hope for two but you want to avoid the zero and in this case for ryan it just seems like he can't even get there in the first place oh no so just the retreat into the pass over on to michael's turn using that town store immediately does michael play that forest seal stone i don't think he does but we've seen some japanese lists of tina play forest seal stone which is kind of interesting it's kind of What's the word? Counterintuitive that you might want to play it because Garrison of V-Star's attack is so powerful, but sometimes it makes sense to get that additional consistency boost. Yeah, it's a card that yeah, you don't necessarily want to play because that Star Requiem effect is just so powerful on Garatina V-Star. It can be useful in the early game, but at that point, what cost are you, uh, are you really using it at? So instead of that Forest Seal Stone, I think Michael will probably just grab a Rescue Board. I think the Tina lists nowadays have been playing one of these. Makes sense. You get to chain your comfies. Even if your opponent disrupts your hand with a Roxanne, you will always have at least one free retreat, which is nice. So we will probably see the rescue board come out while Michael is checking the prizes. Have people been prize checking prize checking pretty aggressively? I guess well, I guess that's not the right word. Have they been doing it well 
over in the basement where the non-tree matches have been played? Uh, for the most part. I, I so? did hear uh, a few exclamations of, oh, I missed that. Or, <laughs> I saw someone uh, take up their prizes earlier, and they thought they prized one of a card, and they scooped. Turns out there was, uh, or they thought they prized two. Turns out there was only one oh, the whole time. Okay. The other was in their deck. Interesting. I see. Um, but for the most part, it's been much more intense when it's those control decks that we're seeing right. a lot, or those Snorlax yeah. stall. Um, but not as intense when you're playing something like this Turbo Hands deck. So we see Michael using that chorus, has it in hand, which is a good thing to have if you're a Lost Tina player. Poffin hitting the Lost Zone. I think there's four now. What will Michael attack with this turn? That is the question. Are you expecting a Abyss Seeking or maybe a Cram Attack here? Uh, I think Abyss Seeking is probably the move. Considering, looking at Ryan's board, he stuck this in the active. It has a large retreat. Yes, there's ways to get out of it, but mm -hmm. at this point, if you're going for a cram attack, you could clean it up later. But at this point, I think you're mainly going to be using your Garatina V-Stars to attack right. um, in the majority of the game. So if you can power that loss zone up quickly, get that Mirage Gate out as soon as you can, I think that's going to be the move on Michael's end. Do you think this matchup is Iron Hand's favorite, or how would you... Ooh, it's a really close one as well. Is it? It's really going to come down to that early game and then that big late game swing because Iron Hands looks so powerful. It's all Iron Hands until <laughs> Tina finally sets up, right? right? Um, it usually will just come down to the Tina player's ability to respond. I tend to think it's slightly Tina favored. Okay, but interesting. It's gone both ways today. So we see... Your opinion is that it's Tina favored by default and Ryan did maybe lag a turn, not able to yes. find that pick acceleration. So I guess in this board state, we would expect Tina to pull out the victory, but it's still anyone's game. It's still really early on. So we'll have to see. Take my Tina buys with a grain of salt. It's a deck <laughs> that I've played a lot true, of recently. That is true. But Michael already having the second one down too. His setup seems to be looking pretty, pretty solid. I'm going to actually pull up Michael's deck list as we speak, because I'm kind of curious if his Tina list is playing Lost Vacuum, and I don't... Oh, there is one. There is one Lost Vacuum, so that that could come into play here, of course, because the Iron Hands deck does have that heavy baton, which means that even if you do disrupt your opponent with Roxanne, they could potentially have a second Iron Hands ready to go thanks to the heavy baton. So the combination of Lost Vacuum and potentially the combination of using that Star Requiem to get around heavy baton might make it so that Ryan loses out on attackers and eventually falls and falters in the late game. Yeah, that's going to be a big key, too, with that Mew EX you're seeing on Ryan's bench. The whole, right, the whole problem in this true. matchup is that Iron Hands doesn't have that one-shot potential into Garatina, but the Mew EX is the big fix for that. But there's not really an efficient way to power it up right. other than that Heavy Baton. So we see, actually, instead of Abyss Seeking, we actually see a Lost Impact taking the first two prizes. This is pretty rare, Tina taking the first two prizes against Turbo Hands. I always am worried when I'm playing Tina, too. It's something just feels off when you're, yeah. when you're striking first. <laughs> there must be something you're missing or allowing your opponent to go for a comeback line. But, I mean, it's it's been all Michael Davidson so far this game. That's true. It does look that way. Michael actually... There's been a number of players that have some unique decks. I think we were talking off stream a little bit about Tyler Matthews, me and Etchy were at least, and about how he brought two very unique decks. But Michael, even though this Tina deck isn't very unique, the, the deck in the back that he has to switch to, to when he wins is Guardi, which is, I think he's the only one that, that brought Guardi here to this tournament. Hey, I believe he is, yes. What do you think about, have you have you watched Michael play this Guardi yet today? I've been had, I've had my eyes glued on Michael's <laughs> games when he's playing Guardi. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's been a deck that I'm super interested really? in post-rotation. Uh, it's something that has been doing well in a lot of these like grassroots online yes. events, but how much weight can you put into that is really the question. You put it in the hands of a very capable play uh, Guardi player like Michael Davidson, and he's been killing it with it so far. I've Two seen one, him really pull out some, whether that's comeback victories or just strong wins overall. I believe the only loss that he's taken with Guardi was uh, to Jake Gearhart, I want to say, on that uh, uh, lost box deck. <laughs> The Lost Box deck. So we see Ryan get to use that peak acceleration, charging up that Iron Hands, but Michael definitely in the lead. You don't even expect Garatina to be in the lead at this point in the prize trade. So the fact that he is, I think, signals a lot that this game is going well for him, but still has to manage his resources correctly. Still plenty of time left in this game. Already burning two energies to that Lost Zone, thanks to that Lost Impact. Could matter. What will he do this turn? That's my question. This Maridon is kind of awkward with how much HP it has. Oh, well, actually, was... no. Sorry, it's 110, is it? 
Yeah, it is 110. So, so the cram is a viable line, but okay. I mean, if Michael can, you know, gust up that iron hand right. on the bench, that might be a, <laughs> the move better. that he tries to favor. Um, but at what cost, really, in that case, if you're just activating the wish baton, I, I suppose you have the ability to requiem. Um, True. But there's the risk of Michael getting too aggressive and then getting potentially punished by an Iono on Ryan's end. That is right. It looks like Ryan is playing Iono. Let me check. I, th I guess he has one in the prizes. I don't know if there's any more in his Let deck. Let me check while we look at what Michael chooses to do for the rest of the turn. Looking for that gear. Did did he pull a supporter off the gear? I, I didn't notice. We'll see in just a moment. But it looks like Ryan does play two Iono. So you're right in that Michael could definitely get punished here if he goes too far. If he burns too many resources. So instead, just going to cram away. 110, knocking out this Maradon, going down to odd prizing. So still needs two more attacks to close out the game, but still very firmly in the lead. And he has those two Garatinas on the bench. The thing he's really going to be looking for on the follow-up is that Mirage Gate. Mm -hmm. I mean, even an Iono here wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a bad move out of Ryan and could potentially leave Michael with one of those just mid-game Garatina hands where you're kind of True. stuck with much do about nothing. Thankfully for Michael, though, more than 10 in the Lost Zone means that one Psychic Energy is enough as an out to attack next turn. So there's a lot of outs in the deck still, even off an Iono to three. But does Ryan even have that Iono? It doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I mean, he has the Energy Attachment. Maybe can pull off something like that Ampy very much this turn, but Ryan just seems to be hesitating and kind of... <laughs> I think Ryan was reading Heavy Baton to see what if it moved Gift Energy or not, because he looks like he's deciding between Gift Energy or Lightning Energy. It does seem to be the case that Heavy Baton only lets you move Basic Energy cards, so this Gift Energy cannot be moved, and instead going to Prime Catcher and use Arm Press to knock out the Skeleton of V-Star. You will need one more damage modifier, I believe. He's only hitting for 180 right now, but I think I saw an Iono in there. That could be yeah. what gets him there. So we do see the one of Iono. There is another one in the prizes, of course, but it's the only one that he has access to for now. Just needs one more crown. I think he's incredibly likely to get it, but not guaranteed. Iono, both players putting their hands on the bottom of their deck. Michael will draw three, thanks to the three prize cards he has remaining. Ryan will draw six. You don't expect the Turbo Hands deck to be the one behind and try to make a comeback off this Iono, but... It's not impossible looking at this board state. I think Michael is definitely favored, but I I don't think it's impossible for Ryan to win off of this. It was what I was just saying. When Tina goes up, something's <laughs> wrong. Something's amiss. Um, it does feel see wrong. if Ryan is able to capitalize. Nest Ball grabbing another hand, potentially making sure that there are two options to Heavy Baton 2. But it, it makes sense, though, that Ryan was so heavily choosing between attaching that gift versus attaching that lightning because only two energies will get to get moved if this iron hand is to go down yeah ryan's still having access to electric generators though presumably True. still being able to raw draw into some energies should they go into that mu ex so it's not the end of the world and that gift energy just gives you so much value in the late game gift energy really powerful as long as michael doesn't have a way around it like we discussed that vacuum or the star requiem it is important to note the text of Heavy Baton. This is something that trips up new players like so often. When a text says something like the damage from an opponent's attack and yeah. how that compares to the Star Requiem text, Star Requiem simply says your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out. There is no damage to be done, which means you get around the Heavy Baton if you're able to get that attack off. But thankfully for Ryan, Michael is still still needs quite a bit to actually activate that attack. Yeah, exactly. You know, Michael's up to that 10 marker on the Lost Zone. Mm -hmm. He's well past it at this point. It's going to come down to if he can get that V-Star, right. if he can get that Mirage Gate. Right. Something to note is that Michael does have one course in the prizes. Not the end of the world, but the fact that he's already played a couple might make it harder to find one, but he does find one <laughs> off of the Flower Selecting. So we might see Garazina V-Star take another knockout this turn, bring Michael down to one, potentially. Chorus, again, we see the gate, but we don't see any Garazina V-Star. Is that what they call the caster's curse, Vic? You will in existence <laughs> yeah, it's, with that it's, It happens all the time, to be honest. We see Michael, though. There's no guaranteed V-Star choice here. There could be one in hand. I'm not sure. We have to wait and see Michael making a choice here. And I also don't know what exactly is the route for Michael. Even if he gets the KO this turn, definitely in a great position. But you still have to knock out one more Pokemon after that. So I guess... Your best bet is to Star Requiem into Lost Impact. 
And the bench lock is very interesting for Michael True. here. That could be something that proves to be his downfall. He only oh. has that one. He has no space open on the bench now. So this one Garatina may oh, have to carry him to victory. Catcher. Onto this iron bundle. This play makes a little more sense now. <laughs> this iron bundle being in play actually ends up costing Ryan an odd prize because this cram is able to get a prize when it normally would not have been. So maybe Ryan should have actually discarded the bundle before playing the Prime Catcher last turn. Yeah, that's it's a, it's a miss from Ryan, but it's also not necessarily the play you'd immediately expect right. out, of, out of Michael's end. He got very creative um, in allowing himself to just have that one Garatina and still be fine, get down to that two prize marker and hope that this Garatina is able to carry him the rest of the way. But Cram on the Bundle was a very clever play it's for good. Michael in, really in finding good. a way to minimize the amount of resources that he's expending yes. in order to maximize the uh, distance he gets in this game. It's all about that odd or even prizing. And it, given Ryan's deck is pretty much almost all two prizes, it makes sense to put yourself back onto that even prizing to close out the game with one more attack. And I mean, it ended up being a, a mistake in hindsight for Ryan not using that Iron Bundle, getting it out of the discard before he played your Prime Catcher to, to make it not a target. But I, I can't say for sure that it was a misplay because there was realistically a chance that that Hyper Blower ability would have mattered later on in the game. So you might not want to just burn it just to get rid of the bundle. Yeah, play, absolutely. So. And you're seeing the spot Ryan's in now, too, where he's able to knock out pretty much anything that's not a Garatina V-Star with his Iron Hands. Yes. So that bundle could have been a really relevant piece as it the game have, went on. For sure. Unfortunately, though, for Ryan, I think Michael has the gate in hand, if I'm not mistaken. Does Ryan have any way to manipulate or change that hand of Michael's? Yeah, I think it's that, hard to tell. He's keeping a hand close to the chest. Looking at the deck list, it seems that there were only two Ionos. One Got has already played, and one is in the prizes, unfortunately, for Ryan. So I, I think this might be it. Oh, we see this water energy go back. Perhaps back. it was a double attachment yeah, that was just I caught. Think maybe. Something like that. So... We'll go ahead and fix that while Ryan plays out the rest of his turn, using that Techno Radar to grab an Iron Crown, maybe two, just to thin the deck a little bit. But Michael still having access to that V-Star ability, or V-Star power, one Mirage Gate would pretty much seal the game, as long as the energy are in the deck, which I think there are at least enough. Ryan now thinking about what to do. What can he do? Research, discarding the crown and the Maridon, drawing seven. I guess, ideally, you would attack with Maridon again this turn, but Ryan already discarded that second Maridon. Yeah, I mean, that would be potentially the most realistic line, but it also is that odd even prize trade again that you were mentioning, mm -hmm. where it's going to put him onto three. How far is that realistically going to yeah. get him in this game? Have we reached the point where Ryan just has to say, if you have right, it, you have you're it? You're right. I think maybe it's better just to take two and then hope that Michael can't get there in this last turn and then use something like a gust to, to finally close out the game. I think you're right that that might be the best option. We'll see what Ryan ends up settling with. Michael is definitely in the lead, definitely in a, in a prime position to win, but it was. It's just a matter of one turn, really. Ryan's going to go down to two this turn, and the one turn that Ryan was not able to hit that peak acceleration on turn one makes all the difference in the world, right? If Ryan was able to do that one turn earlier, we would be talking a completely different game right now. And for a deck that plays so many energies, you'd think it, yes, as simple as it is, you'd have one. You would. Michael Sometimes. promoting the Comfy, maybe not completely confident. Maybe that uh, he has those resources in there, but the, the town, town store, store double check. Just to double check the energy, Mirage Gate, Psychic. Grass in hand, probably a switch cart as well, or jet. And that is it. Game one going over to Michael in a quick eight minutes. That's time for some Guardi action. It I think, is. Vic. It is. Guardi has been slept on by a lot of players, including myself. I'm not sure I buy it yet, but I can see the potential. I can see I can see why it could still be solid in in today's meta. I think most players right now would place it around tier two tier three even potentially but i mean uic is right around the corner we know a lot of european players love their guardian oh yes so so do some of the americans that are going to uic of course we have what three thousand plus players there so yeah. there's sure to be some there's, there's sure, sure to be, be a few some guardy here and there so what is your expectation here i i believe guardy guardy has to be played i i imagine ryan will probably just run back turbo hands Presumably, yeah. Presumably. With the Guardi, with <laughs> Presumably. The Guardi. So just to make sure that he gets one win on the board and then yes. guarantees that even if there is time, there, if it goes to time, there would be at least a tie. That's that's my presumption. 
Um, aside from that, oh, I forget what Ryan's other deck is. Let me pull that up. But aside from that, it is a Arctina. Arctina. So, what other matchups does Guardi struggle with besides Turbo Hands? Are so, there any? Yeah, Guardi Turbo Hands actually isn't as bad as a oh, lot of people it? make it out to be because you have that Scream Tail. You have those tools that you can attach. Okay. So a lot of times Guardi is gusting up one of these Iron Crowns or these bulkier Pokemon, right? And being able to go into that Iono plus Scream Tail play. Um, if you look at data online, online events, I was checking it the other day, actually, it's roughly 50-50. Oh, interesting. Um, so it's not that bad, um, the more you look at it. For uh, Michael, the matchups that are really hard for Guardi to deal with are more of those stall decks, those control okay. decks. Um, a lot of lost box lists are tougher to deal with now, given the lower power level of Guardi and the fact right. that a lot of your Pokemon are lower in health, and those are the decks that are more heavily reliant on lost vacuum, which that is the big kryptonite for Guardians. Oh, yes, now. because you get... They basically knock themselves out, essentially, if you yes. get to lock vacuum the two at the right time. That makes a lot of sense. I haven't really put that much time into Guardi in this format. It is pretty different from last format, right? Because your, your reliance on, on Drifloon and Screamtail rather than using that Shining Arcana Guardi. Makes sense that vacuum is, is so dangerous. We actually do see a vacuum in Ryan's deck, I believe. Oh, but I think... I think we're getting a note from our app that Ryan is choosing to switch, potentially, Ooh. for this match. We'll yeah, get look, confirmation on that in a second, but so far that, that seems to be the case. Tell me a little bit about this Arctina deck. What have you seen from it so far over in the unstreamed matches? Yeah, so this Arctina deck is... I mean, Arctina historically is a very straightforward deck. You're going in with your Trinity Nova, your Trinity Charge, you're going in with that Garatina. It does sound um, like, sorry to interrupt you, but it does look like we're ready to go. So we're going to oh, set perfect. it over, and then you finish your thought about Arctina. <laughs> All right, but Ryan does have some tricks in there. He has the Iron Leaves, the Aerodactyl. Um, there's a lot of fun things that you can go between the Airy, and he even has Lost City in this deck, which historically has been a very strong card against the Guardian. True, deck. okay. So we see Michael switch over to Guardi. We see Ryan. And as we mentioned before, competitors don't have full deck lists, but they do. They are aware of the two archetypes that their opponent has brought. So in this case, Ryan knew that Michael had to switch to Guardi, and given that information, chose to switch to Arc in this case. Let's see what he chooses to do with it. I think it makes sense from some perspective, because as Arc, you want to guarantee that you get to go first, right? Yes. If you don't switch, that, that means your arc is pretty much guaranteed to go second because you would have to win and then and then Michael would choose. So in that sense, I, I like the decision to switch. Yeah, the turn switch affects the Arceus side of things more than it does with the turbo Right, hands. it does, for sure. And we see Ryan searching through the deck now, doing some prize checking. Michael, I believe, it, I believe Ryan was doing prize checking while Michael takes his turn. And Heavy Ball, <laughs> I think there's some sort of mishap where the prize just fell on off the table yeah of some sort <laughs> michael's gonna grab those he's gonna write them down um but ryan kind of got all you need to get is arc turn that's one all, he got the arc that's energy it. he can figure out the rest that's from all there. you need do you think arc tina is pretty much the main primary variant of arc of arceus we'll see moving forward at euic we saw some like arc alolan vulpix do well in japan of course but is Arctina the standard right now? Uh, I think it's like the stock standard yeah. list that you're going to start out with. That's going to be the most popular version of Arceus. Um, Garatina, again, just being able to deal so much damage. Such an effective card. But that being said, there is an Arc Vulpix in the field today. I, I did see on. that, yeah. Um, Connor is on the Arc Vulpix deck. So potentially we'll get to see some of that later on as the tournament goes on. But in the meantime, we are going to be seeing Arctina. That was the more popular version in the field today. I feel like that relatively represents what we'll see at EUIC. Makes sense to me. It does have some nice benefits. Of course, you get to play a big attacker, but you also have that grass energy to use something like Iron Leaves to shore up your starred matchup. Lots of synergy to go around. And I think there are two Arctina decks in the field that are playing this 1-1 Aerodactyl. Is that right? I think it might be two. I know at least one Arctina is. The Arc Vulpix is also oh, playing the Arc Aerodactyl Vulpix package. Is playing Aerodactyl as well. And that's mainly for the Lugia matchup, which is not present <laughs> at all today. <laughs> Nobody decided to bring Lugia. <laughs> Everyone wanted to tough it out, pick a yes. harder deck. And uh, it means Ryan has two potentially dead cards in his deck today. I, I guess it could come up in um, the mirror, though. Potentially, It, it could yeah. be an no, attacker it, in the it's mirror. It's very relevant in the mirror, especially you're seeing this Radiant Guard of War. Uh, out of Ryan, and that's something that a lot of these Arceus decks are playing, which has that ability. Uh, Loving Veil, it's preventing the Garatina V-Star from being able to take a knockout straight up on that Arceus V-Star. Right. So something like the Aerodactyl, where you have weakness, could really be crucial in that sort of a situation. Looks like Michael has a pretty good start, all things considered. Three Ralts on the bench already, turn one, and was able to use that slap attack from the Screamtail. 
I don't think that this damage is relevant, but might as well do it if you have the energy. Now over to Ryan. We see the Ultra Ball, which means good things from Arceus. It means that an attack is imminent. You just need Double Turbo and Switch, which you can grab off the Starbirth. You would like to pair that with a Judge, though, and I don't know if Ryan has that. Michael, playing with the three routes, we see Hero's Cape in the prizes. Is that a big deal, or is it okay that Hero's Cape is in the prizes because it's on the on the bottom? Yeah, I think the bottom is really what's <laughs> what's going to make it okay. tolerable. Yeah, Michael will be able to either get some damage on the board, or at least even knock out that Squovit. Granted, he doesn't know that Hero's Cape would be one right. of the first prizes That's he's true. going to take. Um, but yeah, that Hero's Cape is a very relevant card, but it tends to be a little more relevant in the late game. Michael has, you know, the uh, the other tools that can allow him to increase the HP, whether that's the Luxurious Cape or the Bravery Charm. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael will have plenty of ways to boost this HP, and especially as he's getting more Psychic Energies in the discard, it's going to be more relevant in the late game when you're more easily able to attach a large sum of Psychic Energies. Something else I noticed from Michael's prizes is that he did prize one copy of Technical Machine Evolution. Looking at his list, he does play a second, so that could come into play this next turn, possibly, if Michael doesn't have the most amazing hand. If he has pretty much an average hand, he probably will look to do that play. As we see Ryan go for the star birth, probably for a double turbo energy and a judge, I guess. It depends on the rest of the hand. Judge is right at the front there. It's taunting him and nothing else, <laughs> yes. but eyeing up a Bidoof, Bidoof potentially as well. as well. So something that Gardevoir lost that was really essential is, of course, Mirage Sepcurlia. That is no longer legal to be played after this rotation. Evolution kind of does the same thing, kind of not here and there there are some advantages some disadvantages to it sure um would you say that this guard board i mean you said that michael has been winning most of the games with the guard board deck has it been has it been pretty consistent for him so far uh from what i've seen he's been able to set it up really nicely yeah. and it's also the fact of that arvin arvin is right. now a huge piece of this guardy deck that guardian would never have touched with a 10 foot pole before <laughs> um but arvin as you see now Speaking of something which... that can get on the turn on the turn one situation can get you that poffin can get you that de evolution rather right? all in one go so you're getting those two routes immediately down onto your bench and you have the way to evolve them it does say a lot about the importance of evolution in this deck that Michael has crafted, That the TM evolution that is, given that he's playing two copies of it. You really only need one, but Michael's saying, hey, this is so important that I just absolutely cannot prize it, so I'm going to play two. It's also something that could be relevant with a slower start as well in some situations. True. You could maybe use it twice, back to back, or just having the increased chance of drawing it, also definitely an advantage for sure. We see Michael grabbing Vessel and TM Evolution off of the Arvin, grabbing two Psychic Energy, one probably going to be pitched away with that Concealed Cards, one maybe attached to this Ralts to potentially use that TM Evolution attack. Of course, I mean, we, we haven't talked about it yet. I'm assuming most of our viewers at home know, but let me pull it up for you. TM Evolution, of course, has that Evolution attack. It's opposite of the Devolution that we've seen in the past, but it, you get to choose two of your bench Pokemon, and for each of those Pokemon, you get to search your deck for a card that evolved from that Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it. Even if they were put into play this turn, you can kind of skip that summoning sickness that Pokemon normally have. Yeah, and it's kind of falling in line with the history of these easy setup cards that you can use for low cost at the beginning right. of the game. Almost reminiscent of the old like HGSS era Pichu, if mm -hmm. you remember that, mm -hmm. just setting up I your do. board. <laughs> setting up your board... Nice and easy. Now Michael has access to two Refinement Curlia to draw more cards. Ryan going to go down to four prizes before Michael takes any, but I, I would assume this is what you expect from the Gardevoir matchup. Yeah, you're going to drop a few prizes at the beginning. <laughs> that's kind of the story of Gardevoir yeah. throughout the years. But it's really that late game comeback that separates it from the back. So we see Ryan getting the Barrel now, using that Squovit. Nestash drawing one. Nestash, such a unique ability. Usually, I mean, in most decks and in most situations, you would think that it's terrible, but combined with the barrel, makes a lot of sense in this deck in particular. You get to put cards or resources that you don't want to get rid of, or maybe you can't get rid of, to maximize your industrial industrial incisors as Ryan draws up to five. What are we expecting to see from these players? What are both of these players hoping to draw into at this point in the game? Yeah, so both of them are just trying to continue to set up their boards here. On Ryan's end, he has that Garatina V potentially setting up a third attacker, something that's difficult for Michael to be able to get that return knockout on. But Ryan's also trying to be able to have that response when Michael does finally have that one big setup turn. You see him attaching that tool to the Garatina V. It's setting up for a potential one-shot knockout on the Gardevoir EX should it come down on Michael's end. Maximum belts. Seems like almost nothing <laughs> of what we just described yeah, on Ryan's end. There's now. no 
I'm worried that there's no additional attacker on Ryan's side of the field. I does mean, have those two copies of Arceus V Star in the prizes, oh, which could right. play a role. But you got to assume there's at least one more Arceus that right. he can get out or a Garatina somewhere. The problem with Garatina V Star is like it's such a powerful attacker, but the lost impact. It's a great attack for sure, but it's very costly, right? You have to put two energy, attach your Pokemon into the Lost Zone. So unless Ryan's able to Lost Zone away a double turbo energy, for example, it will start to chip away at your resources unless you have backup attackers to, to charge up. And in this case, Ryan's board state is looking a little bit grim. Michael could potentially knock out the Barrel, for example, or could maybe knock out the Arceus and start to chip away at Ryan's energies on this board. We see Michael looks like Searching the deck now, using those refinements, maybe trying to attack with Drifloon. I guess that would be the attacker of choice here. What do you think? Yeah, Drifloon, I mean, it's what Michael has down. It seems to be what he's targeting. I also wouldn't mind a Screamtail if it's available to him. Mm -hmm. Something like knocking out that P-Barrel, trying to get rid of Ryan's draw engine could yeah. be a really powerful move as well. And being able to potentially clean up on the score of it later, it's really just about how this prize race is going to shake down. And if Michael can take two prizes, by all means, capitalize. But in this case, luckily for Ryan, that Hero's Cape is in the prizes. So if you do take two prizes with the Drifloon, it does mean that Ryan would probably have an access to take two prizes as well the following turn, right? You would have to assume. Uh, yeah. Unless Michael, of course, is able to go with the Screamtail play on that benched Garatina V. Right, okay. Having not evolved, it's vulnerable. I mean, it That's takes, true. what, six energies on a Screamtail? That's not unreasonable for Michael. So it looks like either Drifloon... Or Screamtail will be the attacker this turn. Which one will it be? No more reversal energy, Shining Arcana shenanigans for this Guardboard deck. Just a little bit lower power than it used to be, but still enough to hang in there with the best. Both of these players are 2-1. I was a little bit worried when we announced the format that we, we want to make sure everyone gets streamed, right? So I was a little bit worried that by the end of the day, we would have matches between players that are not in contention for top four anymore, but thankfully that has not been the case. Both of these players are still definitely in it. Probably even one win in a tie would get them there. Yeah, right in the thick of it, and I don't recall if it's this group or the other group of the bracket, but one of them, going into round four, had three two ones and three one twos. so it's just yeah. completely up in the air, anyone's game. The Chicago land area has so many good players. Even with some of them not being able to make it to this event, we still were able to get a really stacked event. I think I would argue maybe the strongest area of, of the U.S. Potentially. Yeah, I've been in Chicago for six months, and my God, can I not <laughs> win a cup here to save my life? <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been all over as well. I've lived in D.C., I've lived near Chicago, I've lived in Seattle, and now I live in New York City. I would, I would say Chicago ranks number one between all of them. Oh, yeah. We see Michael grabbing tons and tons, tons of energy along with that bravery charm. Five... And I, honestly, remind me, what's the name of this attack for Drifloon here? Balloon Blast. <laughs> Balloon Blast doing plenty of damage, more than enough to knock out that Arc V-Star. And Michael going down to four. What can Ryan even respond with? The board state isn't looking so great. And the problem with that Arceus being knocked out as well is that it's just going to be that much harder for Ryan to power up another attack. Yeah. Now. He's going to need the manual attachments on back-to-back -back turns. If it's an Arceus V-Star, one of those is going to have to be that double turbo energy. Yes. So he's kind of put himself up against the wall here and even just being able to have a follow-up after this turn. This maximum belt does mean you can knock out a guard for EX, but if you do that, at what cost? This Drifloon is already ready to go. You kind of need something like a vacuum, like you said. The Bane of the Bane of Guardi. Does Ryan have that vacuum in hand? I think there is one in the deck. Let me double check the list. I think there's one, but one, if it's not in the yes. hand, it's not doing any good. Um the other key thing, too, that you have to consider is the energy cost. If Ryan's trying to power up another Pokemon on the bench, it's likely going to mean that he's taking two energies off of this active Garatina. Right, if yeah. he's to evolve it to the Garatina V-Star, if he keeps it as a V, it's just making him that more vulnerable. It almost feels like this is a lose-lose situation for Ryan all around. It does seem that way. Ryan evolving up into that Garatina V-Star. Now, maybe having to use that Lost Impact instead of the Shred... I mean, Shred wouldn't feel good either. So, like you said, lose, lose. Shuffling up the deck. The Iron Leaves hitting the discard, so that's another attacking option that's gone. Not a great attacking option in this case, but still one that is hitting the discard. Only one arc left in the deck. One in the discard, two in the prizes. Ryan really needs to set up that arc. <laughs> the Lost City could be key, too, as well. How many okay. uh, Drifloon is Michael playing? Yeah, let, let, me check. Two count. let me check on that Drifloon count.
Drift Loon. It looks like it's actually only one. It is just the one. Only one Drift Loon. So Michael will have to rely on Screamtail for the rest of the game, pretty much. Yeah, it's putting Michael in a bit of a tricky situation now. I'm not sure if Ryan knew that going in, <laughs> um, but he may have ended up getting the lucky end of the of the stick there because most Guardi lists that I've seen have been playing the two copies of it. It is. It does seem to be your primary attacker now, right, after post rotation, so it makes sense to play two. That way, even if you prize it, you're not really having any issues. But Michael, I think, instead of uh, instead of playing two, is electing to play one Drift Loon and one Heavy Ball. And in which case, in most cases, you can't get punished for it, really. But in this case, you will be. And this might be Ryan's ticket to getting back into the game. Yeah, potentially. Just eliminating all those attackers on Michael's end. If Michael's not able to find a response to the stadium, too, it could just get worse and worse as we go true, along. True, that's true. Ultra Ball over from Ryan. Discarding that jet energy. Grabbing potentially the last arc. needing, Realizing the need to set up an additional attacker. But even so, that arc could potentially be a target for Screamtail, can it? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's really going to come down to what Michael chooses to target, and he can kind of adapt this game plan based on where Ryan's getting rid of his energies. That's true. So we see Ryan shuffle up. Do we see an attachment for turn? Looks like Grass onto the arc. Where will Ryan Lost Zone from? There's no double turbo energy to Lost Zone in this case, so two energies off the garrison of V-Star. We know that fighting's going. It's going to be up to what the other, <laughs> the other one is. And there we go. We see a knockout. Ryan going down to three prizes. Michael at four. I think Michael is still winning, but it is it is awkward thanks to the Lost City now. And this gives Michael the line with Screamtail to just go ahead and target that Arceus right. right away. And there's not really an efficient attack that Ryan can pull off on the on the following turn. We do know that Michael grabbed the Hero's Cape off the prizes on the last turn. That's going to be huge. Yes. So Screamtail definitely has the potential. We see Michael eyeing down that Screamtail, super rotting it back into the deck straight away before these refinements and concealed cards take place. I don't know if he has a Nest Ball or anything like that in hand already, but going to dig for it for sure. Shuffling it's going to be up to these up to these refinements, up to if there's a supporter in Michael's hand. His hand looks decently large from our view of it, but it's going to be up to the luck of the draw. Iono and Psychic doesn't quite get you there. Two more refinements left to go. Four more cards to see. Really wants a Nest Ball or an Arvin. Ralts and Mew EX, I think. So one more. The Mew really... EX could be huge as well. Oh, as a, that's as another true. Option. That's true. You could Mew EX to take 280 and go down to two prizes. And if you do that, your opponent basically can't attack except with double turbo energy Arc V-Star. And given that Ryan only has two cards in hand... That could be a great option just to make your opponent have it or force your opponent to have it. And with three prizes remaining on Ryan's side too, even True. if that is even if he finds the knockout, it still gives Michael one more turn. Last refinement. So no Screamtail option unless he already the had Poffin it. Poffin could hand. get there though. No? The Poffin can get Screamtail? 90 HP or less? Poffin is 70 HP. 70 HP, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pull it up for the audience to make sure. Poffin only 70, yeah, 70. HP. So Screamtail going to stay in the deck for Michael, so I think the Mew EX has to be the, the play here. My brain just wants it to be level ball, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, 90 HP was so good, but unfortunately, Sableye, Screamtail, not going to be part of the club. Actually, the one deck that suffers the most, it's not a meta deck, of course, but the one deck that suffers the most is Torterra EX. All the Turtwigs in the meta have 80 HP. It's so sad. I cannot name what a single Turtwig does. <laughs> well, they all have 80 HP, so you cannot you cannot That's play the, the deck. That's the only relevant part of yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> because actually the deck could potentially be viable as like a tier 2 deck if you had Poffin to set up your Turtwigs. You just flood the field with your Turtwigs, evolve them off to Grotto, and Grotto has a way to search for more grass Pokemon. But you just can't because the Turtwig is 80 HP. It's so sad. Is this your Roman Empire or what? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Anyways, we see the Iono from Michael with the MUEX coming down, actually attaching the Hero's Cape to the MUEX. That's something that I didn't consider, but... Normally, you would imagine that Hero's Cape is used as a damage modifier of sorts to, to bump up the Screamtail damage, to bump up the Drift Loon damage, but actually, it's just using... Michael's just smartly using it for its raw HP add to the Mew to make sure it can't get knocked out by Arceus here. Bringing up the Mew EX with the Hero's Cape, retreating that Curlia, putting two damage on it, attaching three off the Psychic Embrace. Mew will go down to 120, but the Hero's Cape brings it back up to 220, and it will be safe no matter what Ryan draws into, pretty much. And that's a huge swing turn for Michael here. Got to be is. taking the lead prize-wise and just objectively based on board state. The two Psychic could be relevant, though, to some future math. Could be. 
Getting rid of those is going to limit the amount that he can put on a Drifloon or a Screamtail. But I think the, the the risk there is worth the reward. Wait, I saw the vacuum in hand oh? for Ryan. So no double turbo yet, no Arc V-Star yet. So it's not... But the, has the Squovit, has the Bibber. Has the Squovit and the Bibber. Yeah, it's possible to get a KO here. And if he does, the Drifloon being prized, sorry, being lost owned could matter. Nest ball for Arc V, thin out the deck just a little bit. I don't know how many double turbos he has access to still, but not can't be very many. Two. I think I saw two in there. This bench could be risky out of Ryan, too, the more you're considering it. Yeah, if that's Michael's true. If Michael's down two of those energies, an Arc V star can't be knocked out by a Screamtail um, unless he has seven energies. Maybe Michael's... How many energies is Michael playing? Michael second. plays nine. Nine, okay. So he will be able to get to that seven marker then. I'm used to most of them playing eight, so it could be a little tricky with the math, but I think the V is a little more of a uh, fine bench now knowing that. So we see Ryan bench the Garrison of V, play the vacuum, choice belt into the loss zone in trade for that hero's cape, and then Iono. Ryan really needs DTE Arc V star here. And that's Ooh. neither. Not even a card he can thin. Might just have to squab it. Yep. Nest dash to the bottom. I mean, that card's won regionals. It's done, it it's done trickier things before. What's that? It's an Arc V. I think it's Arc V, but not a V star, unfortunately. So we just have to draw a raw five. The deck is stacked in such a way that there are a bunch of cards on the bottom that he doesn't want to see, but we see the DTE, but no double turbo. It's going to be a 10 damage short oh, if he goes for the man. power edge. Power edge. Not quite enough. 130 minus 20 from the DTE. 110 putting Mew at 170. Although, that might be fine. Because then, oh, I guess Mew EX has free retreat anyways. If Mew had like two retreat or something, then it could matter. But in this case, I guess it, you just retreat the Mew. Right? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, no, with the free retreat, it's not going to make too big of a difference. I don't yeah. know. Maybe it lets Squovit get a little jab <laughs> in for the knockout. But I doubt we see that happen. Oh, no. Ryan, just one card short. Not finding the Arc V star. Some of these Arc decks have been playing for Arc V, for Arc V Star, maybe for situations kind of like this. Obviously, the main reason is just to be able to star birth immediately, but stuff stuff like this can happen too, where you really want Arc V Star to, to chain your attackers. There's also the, just the potential for a Trinity charge here. Try to power up that Garatina, mm, maybe get a, true. set up something on the bench, but again, Ryan just does not really have an optimal line here. I mean... Ryan really needed the Arc V start this turn. And even if he did get there, it doesn't mean that he wins the game, right? It actually means that Michael has one more opportunity to to win the game with the with the Screamtail play. But the fact that he doesn't hit it, I think, is pretty disastrous, as we see from his face. Ryan smiling a little bit, thinking about what to do, how to get how to dig out of this hole. Is there anything he can do? As he's deciding but now between Trinity Charge and Power Edge, I suppose. This guard at EX deck. Not gonna lie, it's a little bit more impressive than I than I expected. Hey, get getting one over a little now. <laughs> a little bit. I don't think I'd play it, but I I I will respect it from now on. I will say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it is pretty neat, and we see Trinity Charge being the option of choice. Now, can Michael close out the game here and now? Only has those two cards to work with off the Iono, but. With all that draw on his bench, surely he can at least build up somewhat of a sizable hand. Yeah. Looks like he'll be able to do something this turn, but what it is, I'm not quite sure just yet. I guess one option is you can start attacking with this Gardevoir EX, now that this Garatina V-Star and the Maximum Belt have been taken out of action. We see Arvin come down for Nest Ball and, and Luxurious Cape, so I think that is game. Yeah, that'll get there with the Screamtail. Michael winning with the Guardi yet again. You said almost undefeated in these unstreamed games. Only one one match you, you saw it lost. It's cool seeing all these like untested and unrespected decks take the wins. So Michael's Guardi deck, Tyler's Gouging Fire deck, all doing really well today. Is this what you expected, or are you a little bit surprised by the variety? No, this is not what I expected. <laughs> uh, we saw the list ahead of time. They were posted for us last yeah. night, and I was looking at Tyler's lists and just being <laughs> baffled. <laughs> Gouging, what are these cards? Where are they coming from? Um, 
But, I mean, that's kind of the, been the story of Pokemon history. When a deck isn't respected much, it that's allows true. it to have more of that underdog mentality. And people aren't teching for it. People aren't preparing for it, testing against it. And, I mean, if you're not prepared for this wacky deck that comes about, it's just more inclined to make misplays. We see Michael go up to 3-1, and one, which doesn't mean he's locked in for top 2, but is in a really good spot. Maybe could potentially ID or tie, depending on what his opponent would like to do, to get him there. If Michael does move on to our top four, do you expect any big obstacles for that Guardi list? Yeah, there is some controls in the field. Yeah, there I is. don't quite know how well they were doing. I know, I want to say Sky was 2-2, two, two, Jeremy was 1-3. Uh, like I don't recall if there's any other controls in the field, but that could be a, a difficult matchup for Michael. You also got to be worried about those Lost Box decks. You see Jake mm -hmm. with this wacky <laughs> very Sables wacky, very Iron wacky. Hands. Max Belt. The last thing I'd expect <laughs> to see out of Jake Gearhart is an Iron Hands. But um, <laughs> when you're seeing all these like crazy Lost Box concoctions, and even Lost Tina can be something that's still difficult for the, the Guardi deck. So it's not an easy path. There are certainly obstacles out there for Michael. But that's also the beauty of this Conquest format. It is very you're cool. You're sending in one deck and you're seeing what you get. So you could get the short end of the stick, could get the good end of the stick. And it's just going to kind of be up to us to wait and see. My last question for you before we head over to an interview with Michael, our champion. Who do you have predicted to win it all? Do you have a, do you have a guess Ooh. yet? Ooh. I'm going to ride with Tyler. Tyler, Everyone, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of been the consensus in the field. Before I was coming up, people were saying, well, we know Tyler's going to go 5-0. Oh, it's about who else in the bracket is going to meet him there. Um, the Gouging Fire deck has looked fantastic so far. Interesting. Um, I'm not necessarily a believer in the Ancient Box, but he's been, been consistently well, getting yeah. it done. Um, so uh, maybe a basic pick, considering the fact that he's you know 3-0 going into this round. Right. But, I would love to see a bit of a, an off-the-wall deck do well. So Tyler being hyped, and we'll see him soon. Haven't seen him on stream yet. Might be the next match. I'll have to get back to you. But audience, stay tuned. We'll be right back with an interview with our winner, Michael. And we'll see you in a bit. Welcome back, chat. I'm here joined by Michael Davidson, one of the top players, the new and upcoming rising stars of the U.S. <laughs> and Chicago. Welcome, Michael. How did that last match feel for you? Um... I was it, did it go as expected, or were you able to? Were you a little bit scared heading into the match, or were you expecting to win that one in two in two zero fashion? I was pretty confident. Um, if he played, or if I played Guardi first into his hands, that that's pretty losable. I I think that matchup's like fine, but they're probably slightly favored. Um, but like the way the matchups lined up, I was pretty confident with. Tina beating hands and then Guardi beating Arc. Although the Lost City is a little scary for me, right? But. It did look like you only played one Drifloon and playing the heavy ball, which usually can't get punished for, but in this case, it, it was a little bit scary. But I was impressed by how powerful that Guardi deck looked. You were the only one to choose Guardi into this event. Tell me a little bit about that deck selection process. How did you go about choosing Guardi, and do you, do you think it was a wise choice? Um, I, I, I guess it paid off. It's, I've like won with it every round, <laughs> yeah. but, um, I, I, don't know, I mean, I've just been playing Guardi like the whole season. I pretty much wrote it off, like at, when rotation first happened, right. but, um, we were testing it the other day and it, it was winning games. Um, um, the matchups that we thought would be terrible, like were fine. And the, the damage output's like honestly even easier with right. the tools. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in like multi prize matchups, it's it's pretty uh, pretty favorite, I think. Do you think Guardi is something you would consider for EYC potentially, or is it still kind of iffy? I it's it's kind of it's probably a stretch to say that I would consider okay. it. Um, like I, I will consider it, but it's definitely not like one of my top picks. Hey, if you end up winning EUIC with Guardi, I'm going to record this and play it back to you, make a big <laughs> meme out of it. Anyways, it's it's looked like it's been doing pretty well. Is there anything in the field that you are worried about seeing? Um, honestly, Lost Box Lost is probably Box. like my most difficult matchup, but I don't, I don't know if I can hit any more Lost Box because I already, um, I already hit Jake and I think he was the only Lost Box in my group. Okay. So you are 3-1 now. I don't know for sure if that's locked. We can check the standings in, in just a bit. You might have to play the last one. You might be able to ID it. We'll have to see. I don't think I'll be able to ID because Sky is only 2-2. Two, two. Okay. So we'll have to see how that one plays out, if you will make it out of your group or not. But congratulations so far. I do have one last question for you, though. You are a first-year master. Is that right? Do you have any tips for the fans out there, the viewers at home that might be in the same position? There may be a last-year senior, first-year master, or maybe just a new player in general getting into the game. How do you convert from going from a different division of masters, or did you feel like it's, it's mostly the same thing? 
Um, as far as like making day two versus making um, top eight in seniors, it's it's relatively similar. Um, it's a lot harder to get the higher placements in masters, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but the way, um, well, this is when I was still in seniors. But the way I really improved in the game was just by playing like online tournaments over and over. So. Honestly, that's probably my best advice is just to get the practice in against like actual decent opponents, just play online tournaments. And if you had to name one player who you think will take down the tournament besides you, who's the second most likely, would you say, to win it all? Uh, I have to go Tyler Matthews. Tyler Matthews has been the talk of the town downstairs. But congratulations again, Michael. Thank you for joining me. And of course, good luck both today and at EUIC. Thank you.